We must be pretty sleepy around here. Sleepy? Yeah. Uh, I'm, into, I'm into making sleepy things. Oh, well I'm always sleepy, so that works for me. <laughs> so today we want to teach you a new project that is similar to our sleepy mice. It's another good beginner project, but it's little baby squirrels. We'll call them sleepy squirrels, but they're, they're baby squirrels, really. Yeah, curled up. So the sleepy mice, um, we have another tutorial for, and this is a great, um, great project if you're get, just getting started. And the sleepy squirrels are a, big, a little bit bigger, made the same way um, on the Zoli tool, which I should have brought one out here, I'll grab one. And um, just a real simple shape on the tool, you're adding feet and ears and color and the tail is really fun. And it was inspired by some really pretty natural um, long roving in locks that we, that we got. So we have a supply pack for it, which will make four, and that's a good that's a good number because you you can do it with friends or you can make several and just get better and better. And then you can also I've made them using using the supply pack, but because it's just natural colors, you can kind of add and use all kinds of things that you might have. Like this one I made with um, with locks on the tail. So it's real, I'll show it up close when we go over the shoulder, but um, it's real full and fuzzy and long. And then we just curl them up and then they're super cute around your house or in your Christmas tree or on your desk. I like the ones with the locks just for like just touching it and you know, sort of like a calming sensory thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know the problem though. What? You just can't be friends with a squirrel. You can't? Well, well no, they'll drive you nuts. <laughs> yeah. I was friends with a squirrel actually when I was little. Really? Yes. In this, when I lived in the city. What's funny is I live in the country now and we have no squirrels. Probably because my dogs drive them out of the yard. But when I grew up and lived in the city, I had a friend that was a squirrel and it would come up a tree, come to our third floor porch and let me feed him well, or her. I, I, I never could get close enough to tell. <laughs> good, good thing it didn't have rabies or anything, you know. <laughs> right, no, right. No, I, wasn't, I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> well, sometimes moms worry about these things. Right. I, I also want to apologize for getting here late. Oh, uh, you were late? Well, yes, you know, traffic was nuts. <laughs> we're going to have nut jokes? Well, brace yourselves. <laughs> so, you will need a um, supply pack, a felting surface, needles, and the Zoli tool, or at least a skewer or a pencil, and, um, and some patience, and maybe about an hour. <laughs> Or two. Yes. <laughs> Should we get started? I think so. Okay. Alright, show me some of those little squirrelies. Okay, I'm going to show you some little squirrels. So, let's see. Well, this is one of the first ones that I made. It's this one, maybe. This little guy. And I used um, olive, which is just one of my favorite browns. I'll show you what that looks like. this. It's one of our house carded bats. It's under the skin tones, right? Yes, under the skin tones, but I end up using it in animals a lot. Then these two are made from the, straight from the kit, which is what I'm going to do today. And we use the dark Polworth, which does the same thing. It's just, the olive is um, just, just slightly different. And like I said, anything that you have, any tan or brown or gray, you can play with it. This one is made from the kit and has the lock tail. So the locks so, do not come in the kit. Locks the do not come in the kit. Right, right. This was part of a giveaway that we had, but we often have just natural locks. So it's a, and 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 this is an example of just using any long fiber that's a little bit different than what's in your kit. So that's kind of what's fun about them is there's a lot of opportunity actually and this one this is elephant our elephant bat huh. yep 
So lots of possibilities. So let me show what's in the kit and what you're gonna have if you purchase the supply pack. Lots of gray core, two 22 gauge wires, um, off-white chunky core, and then all your natural top coats. So I'm going to set the wool aside for one second. And this makes four, so each wire makes two squirrels. So the first thing we need to do is find the center of the wire and cut them in half. And then I'm going to use my pliers and fold the very end of the wire over just so you don't have a pokey you know pokey wire sticking sticking out and then if it's not necessary but if you have it um, some tacky wrap um, sticky bun this is a different shape because this is just a little extra that Talbot set aside for me. Um, but rubbing this on your wire just helps everything stick as you're wrapping. So that's a little extra step if you have that, but you don't need it. So we're going to make this on a Zoli tool. And we're going to start with about 12 inches of gray core. So that's about the length of my felting surface. And then this is real thick, so I'm going to split it into four. Actually, this piece that I'm using right here is not as thick as it usually is. Um, so I may need a little bit more, but basically I'm going to quarter this 12 inches to get started. And this is the gray chunky core. We gray have chunky other gray core. core that you don't yeah. need split in half. Right, right. right. So once you have some tacky wrap on um, your wire, or not, you're going to hold it up against the Zuli tool. And you want it set back just about a half an inch from the tip. So you guys are going to see me wrap right-handed today. <laughs> so don't get, don't get confused. You are going to confuse everyone. <laughs> um, usually I'm this way, but my arm is a little sore, so I'm going this way. And this is how a right-handed person would wrap, and you're gonna get to see me how well I do or do not do it. So keeping this ribbon of wool very smooth and straight, you're gonna wrap around the straight part of the tool and then come up and hit the facet of the end of the tool. And just keep doing that, go around and then hit the facet and then go around and see how I keep drafting it out to make sure it stays smooth and hit the facet. And you should end up with like kind of a bullet shape that matches, you know, the shape of the tool that's underneath it. Then we're going to take two more pieces of our quarters and we're going to wrap about, think of it as about two inches of a body, but it's going to end up being closer to three. So I don't want to go too much. This is two inches. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to go much past two inches. And I'm going to use a third piece on the body. This, take, this wrapping takes a little bit of practice. So if you're just starting, um, be patient with yourself. This is a, you know, a technique that you'll develop skill as you keep practicing and doing it and learning to control the wool. Um, stabbing right-handed is an entirely different game, which I'm not going to play, but I just wanted to get that stuck. So now I have one on the basically the head and two pieces on the body. And then this fourth piece I'm going to do around the body 
I said don't let it slip too far back. And then I'm going to come up and hit the head again. Okay. I'm going to stab this a little bit. Got to do that left-handed or I will hurt myself. You can stab back on the butt so it doesn't slide down the tool. Now this is just a little bit small. Like I said, that that piece of roving um, was not quite as thick as it usually is. So I'm going to take another um, I'm going to take another 12 inch piece and get myself a quarter and wrap the body and head one more time. with their own materials this you want this to be not quite an inch thick three quarters of an inch thick ish just so they um it's a good inch okay yeah all right now we still have like a little bit of a dent where the neck, you know, the neck would be, but this is head and this is body. So about two inches of body and about an inch of head. Now I'm going to slide it off of the tool and I'm going to go ahead and use another one of these 12 inch pieces that I pulled and quartered. Whoops, that sort of, that was hard. And wrap the tail. Oh, that was a good actually before I do that okay so I was just I don't know why I pulled on this and it will kind of pull back out so make sure you don't do that before we wrap the tail let's actually felt the the head a little bit so that things start to stay together better so what I'm going to do is look at it and and see if there's a rounder side um, or fuller side and that would be the top of the head and then so I think I'm going to go this way. So this would be the top of the head and the squirrel is going to curl this way. So what I want to do is set it down with the back of its head against the felting surface. And then I want to stab about um, into the tip of the nose at about a 45 degree angle. And what that's doing is making this dent in their muzzle. I'm kind of stabbing back on the tip of the nose. See, I'm not, I'm not like this. That's going to make your nose too pointy. And I'm not like this. That's going to make it too blunt. And you're going to stab yourself. So it's about a 45 degree angle. And then I can also go the other way and make just start to make a little mouth indent. So you can start to see the little little smile as it's sleeping. All right, that's good. Now I just feel like it's a little gripped in there better. Now I'm going to wrap down the tail. Oops, I switched back to left-handed. It's okay. Am I centered enough? Enough, yep. <laughs> just follow the fingers that is holding the armature follow as you go down that both reinforces uh, what you just wrapped and also holds the wire steady so that it's not you know wiggling around in in space as you as you wrap and this is going to stick pretty well because I, I did put some tacky wrap on this wire and now I'm going to take another quarter and do this again. We call a squirrel with no nuts. Hungry? No, female. <laughs> Told you there were a lot of nut jokes. Yeah, I bet. Really highbrow. Highbrow. So sophisticated. Our, our <laughs> All 
we, we do need to be careful and not let this get too, you know, acorny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So before we elaborate on colors and everything, um, I want to make, they have a pretty broad forehead. So I, and I want to get this pointy nose. So I'm going to make a triangle out of core wool to make this shape to the head and give it a little bit more substance. So I'm going to take the gray chunky core um, using from the full full piece of roving and try to pull off a square like a two inch two inch square. So I'm going to actually restack that. Try to get it a little bit more condensed like that. Two inches without fringe. Okay, and then I just I'm just going to felt um, a triangle into shape this into a triangle. So I'll stab a center line, and then I'll stab my angles off of that. And I just want to fold the very tip of that back so that there's some substance to the tip. That's not too wimpy. And then I let all this fiber you know, kind of flap completely over the rest of the sheet. And when you're working directly into your felting surface like this, make sure you pick up your piece once in a while so it doesn't become too embedded and wear out your, your stab it. So we just have a little pointy nosed triangle. And we want to put this on the top of the head. So I want the nose, the tip of the nose, to stick past this core shape a little bit. And the easiest thing to do is you to... you want to add any color to that before you put it on? I don't. Going... Yeah, I'm just going like this. Because I found out this works better. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. See, I'm questioning you because I made one a different way. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a ton of extra here, you can pull some off. But basically, you kind of want to square off the back of the head a little bit by by pushing it forward um, and just felt that down. There's there's a lot to this. There's making the shapes that you need, and then there's using the needle to sculpt the shape into the proper um, image of what you want. And so that's where you know I always tell people have some reference photos out. Um, because each little stab that you make is a decision. So the goal with this piece is to change the shape of the head, to get a little pointy nose, and to create a place um, where the eye will be once we have our um, top coat colors on. Okay, now we're going to put some off-white sort of down the, down the whole belly. Um, so this guy, or this one has a chin here. I don't want to make anyone with it. This guy's a white chin. So we're putting some white chin, white belly, and then white all the way down the tail. So for this, I'm going to use the off-white chunky core. And to make a little chin, I don't need a big shape. So I'm just going to pull a tiny bit of white and, and fold it into a triangle the way I just did the gray, but it's just a tiny little piece. And then I can felt that. I'm gonna use my single needle here so I can control. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I'm gonna put off white just pulling little thin kind of tufts and go across the whole belly. And I don't care if there's some kind of fringe sticking off each side. It'll get blended together when I put the gray top coat on. So I'm really just concentrating on the belly. Like I'm not worried about this getting felted around the side. This is not like a super fast project. 
but not as involved as longer than sleepy mice. Longer than sure. sleepy knife mice, not as involved as um like basket bunnies or and then I want to go across the tailbone. So I just kind of try to felt some of this off white into each side of the gray. And if you just pull these thin pieces and let them overlap a little bit, you'll get a nice consistent overall shape. So I'm just missing that wire and going down each side of the, you know, the gray that's already wrapped. Why do squirrels swim on their back? I don't think they do. <laughs> but why? They have to keep their nuts dry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jeans. Does this have to do with the nuts? <laughs> of course it does. I don't know why. Their nuts won't fit. Their nuts won't fit. I imagine nuts is like a squirrel's favorite curse word. I like mean, they stub their toe and they're like, nuts! <laughs> it's just the two layers of humor. It's just so funny. <laughs> the two layers. <laughs> You put on a pair of skinny jeans, you can't fit your phone in your pocket. No, I saw some skinny jeans out last night. <laughs> I was like, wow. No room for... I, I won't ask about anyone storing their nuts any places. Much of anything. Alright, so we have our off-white all the way down. Now, we need to make two thighs. Super easy, piece of cake. Take a um, eight inch piece of gray core, which is like the side of your stab it, and quarter it. And then you're gonna wrap the wide end of the Zuli tool just in this inch area, all in one place until that piece is gone. And you're gonna do that two times. Two times. And you slide those off and you have these nice little pillows. And they go at the back of the body on the side and you want kind of one edge to taper onto the back and the other edge is where his little feet are gonna go. So I'm just let, felting this kind of down and in and letting it smooth out over the butt and then felting this onto the side. And you can just stab that down a little bit so it doesn't unravel. But these are like his little thighs, like his little legs were curled up. Like that. <laughs> it's got a funny face. Oh, sometimes I think, is this going to work? Okay, now we need to make feet. And we still have... Um, two quarters of our eight inch piece and this is what we're going to use to make the feet. I got stung by a wasp because so my arm is all oh, no. like, tight. Okay. Alright, little feet. Little feet. We can do this on the round end of the Zuli tool. Similar to the way we do the head, but we want it to stay kind of more flat, not get quite as built up. So we're using an eight inch piece instead of a 12 inch piece, and I'll probably end up pulling some of it off. But I went around and then I hit the facet, and now I'm gonna do it, make sure I do that twice. And then I'll just go around, and then I'm just gonna take this extra off. 
and just pull that off. I can stab it a tiny bit because I'm going to put color on it, so I don't want to stab it too much. So we'll go around the straight part of the tool and then come up on the angle around the straight part. Real important to keep this nice and um, kind of broad and flat because that's the kind of piece we're trying to make. If it has a natural curve, place the curve side down. And then I'm going to use some of my top coat. Some of this top coat is really long, um, really long staple. And since this is such a small project, sometimes we need to cut it. So this um, Paul Worth is, you know, a good four inches long. So I want to cut it and restack it. Restacking just gets rid of that blunt cut edge. So I'm going to put a little bit of the brown across the top of each foot. And then I'm going to do the same thing with some, um, you have two grays, well, two similar grays in your kit. Actually, you know what I should have said, Milo? What? <laughs> I just flicked a needle into my teeth. To um, <laughs> would be everything. to break everything into four so that you know you know these are my four piles for four squirrels so for example with this I would oh wait no but there's more over here what did I do oh okay I got two pieces so I would take them fold them in half and then split them in half and know that each one of these I can use for one of the four squirrels so this is almond, and this is shiitake, so I'm going to split this into quarters as well, which you guys can't totally see, but shiitake is like a cooler, darker gray, and almond is a warmer, lighter gray. So I'm going to take some almond, I'm actually going to cut it in half, and then this over the back of the foot. And depending on one of the squirrels I made, I blended my almond and shiitake together every time I cut it in half. There's just a lot of options. So now I'm going to turn it over and let this fold around the foot. Also make this using um, not using the tool and just stabbing into your felting surface kind of similar to the way we make a bunny ear just getting that fringe gone okay so this is the back of the foot and this is going to be the bottom of the foot like the back of the foot and then that's the bottom of the foot that one has big feet um, so I want to put some off-white on the bottom of the foot so I'm going to just pull some fuzz real thin little bit and then just felt it onto the bottom of the foot punch tool is a good tool to use when you're working on flat things like this. Alright, to make it mo look more foot-like, squirrels have these long, grippy toes. Uh, we're not making individual toes, but to kind of help it look like toes, I'm going to take some of this dark gray that's in the kit 
and just roll little threads in your fingers like this. And let's see if I start on the center of the back. Then bring it around. And that kind of makes a dent like what would be between, you know, just between toes. This is the side that you're going to see more when your squirrel's just sitting next to you. So it's one in the center and one on each side. That makes four toes. Is that accurate, Milo? Oh, I don't know. I know these things. <laughs> no. They have long toes, so I'm making them kind of long. They seem crazy, but I look at pictures. I know. They actually have like these really oversized feet and hands, these little babies. Like a puppy. We don't make hands on this project. Which is why I love it so. Sometimes you just need a quick and simple stab. Oh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> Just edit that out. <laughs> Little feet. Feet. Yeah, and then I kind of try to curl them a little bit. Oh, that's got a crazy big toe there. Then the little feet. Just go on the little legs. Just kind of stab into the bottom of that piece and go from the sides a little bit. Those look cute. I made one, my feet look stupid. <laughs> well, I changed it a little bit to a smaller design. This fringe, I just kind of felt back in on itself to make it look a little heel. Okay. Okay. Let's work on the face a little bit more and then we'll do the tail and then some top coat. So I really just want to get some color over the head here and I can take the brown and I want to cut it. And restack it. And then just put that over the tip of the nose. And then I'm going to mix some of my um, almond and shiitake together. So I'll just put them together, pull a piece, and then restack and mix them together. I'm trying to decide. Yeah, I think I'm going to cut this too. The nut house. You got it. Yay! I've never, I don't think I've ever gotten a joke. As not that bl as blatant. <laughs> well, it's because we already told like 20 nut jokes, so. You had a clue. Yeah. Then I just want to put that over that. And then start by tacking it down on top. And then I have to see what I want this fringe to do kind of on each side. So we just want to wrap around the nose a little bit.
it's okay like if this doesn't cover all the gray like it, it can do different things it's all going to blend together but the important thing is to keep the shape of what we already have going on under there get this over here a little bit more and kind of manipulate it a little bit and get it going where you want it to go and then I want to reestablish that dent and the shape of the mouth okay and then I want to sharpen up around the nose a little bit they're wide back here but not so wide right here so I'm just going to stab in on that And then I'm going to think about their eye being right here and here. So if I just stab, that makes a little place for me to know that's where the where the eyes go. We want to make some ears. So on some of these squirrels, I used a little bit of prefill. You know, like I said. There's a lot of different things you might have around that work well for them. But what we're going to do without any pre-felt is use a little bit of gray core. I just want to restack this to make a little one inch square. And then I'm going to use some of that um, almond shiitake mixture. at the bottom of each square and a little bit of brown which I'm going to cut in half again at the top of each square it's real small amounts here their ears are tiny I think I had a couple of squirrels that weren't so great because I, I just made their ears too big I think so real thin little layers then you turn it over and you stab a little triangle. You could use the Zoli tool as a guide. Just don't stab your Zoli tool. But that's about the size. And then just let the sides fold in. This definitely is a good job for the punch tool. You can put a little bit of off-white in there if you want. Like this. And then I like to kind of pull and twist this and make it look like a little tuft, tuft of hair at the top of their ear. So there's actually a few squirrel proverbs. <gasps> nah. -uh. There are just a couple. Russian proverb, even a blind squirrel finds an acorn sometimes. That's really sad. What's it that, is. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> even a blind squirrel. Uh, everyone gets lucky sometimes. Don't be too impressed with somebody until they really prove what they can do because... Oh, you're so good at this, Kyla. Squirrel. You should be like a, you should have like a Proverbs yes, I channel. Should. Just a whole channel. Like I hear a proverb and I'm like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> and it goes in one ear and out the other. And you hear one and you can make it into something. Well, it's about all I'm doing, but I'll make it into something. Some I don't understand. I don't read those. Like giving advice to a stupid man is like giving salt to a squirrel. <gasps> what do squirrels do with salt, I wonder? I'm guessing nothing. Waste it? I'm, guess I'm guessing nothing. They don't season their nuts. <laughs> 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 All right, so we got to get these little ears on. So I usually start by tacking one end down, just back from the eye. You don't want it right on top of the eye. And then I come around and tack the other end. So these are more sideways ears, not forward ears. Not which forward, they're off to the side. Very tricky, so many kind of ears face forward ears. Sideways. Don't go 
with the bunny ear concept, it won't look right. Yeah, well, bunny ears actually go off to the side a little bit, too. Oh, jeez. This little, little fussy part right here. Bunny ears face forward? Not really. So I just do bunny ears. <laughs> they have an angle, too. Hmm. They're not, like, both, like, well, they, they, they can't. Like, they don't look as stupid like, if you do it wrong. That's what it comes <laughs> down to. All right. So then I want a little bit more top coat just to sort of hide these seams. So we're going to do the almond shiitake thing. It's a thing now. Cut it. Restack it. And then just put, I don't know, just need a little bit here. While I'm over here, I'm going to take a little fuzz for the eye. If I restack this, then I can get two eyes out of one. And then make a little off-white sort of circle. They have this marking here. And then inside that, we're going to put a little sleepy closed It's starting to look like something. Yeah. Something tasty. Thankfully. <laughs> always, always relieved when what I'm making for a tutorial looks like something. I do have fails. Nah. I do. I can only think of one fail. What? That very face. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. That was on. That was that's forever on our YouTube channel as it well. Is. But I think it's the only fail. We should redo that one. The, the faces. I actually don't even think it's a fail. You just didn't finish it because I don't think you liked it. Oh, I was abandoned it. So with this dark core, we can also put little lines to accentuate the nose, the nostrils, kind of a little like Y shape here. Move up okay. one inch. I think you could make this little muzzle off white too. I mean, you can use any of these colors how you want them. Very cute. Then we'll do a little smile with another piece. Just follow that chin and then slightly curve it up at the corner. Aww! Just sweet little yeah, thing. So okay, let's do this tail. Looking pretty cute there. Yeah. The tail is just like a lot of felting using mostly a process we call shingling which we do on all kinds of projects so it's a good good technique to learn and what I want to do is start with off-white and then 
flare gray in the middle so that it has this striped effect. So we put in your kit a color called Grits and you're going to make it into quarters so that you have the same amount for each each squirrel and then um, you're just going to pull off basically a staple length and put the fringe pointing off the end of the tail felt um, kind of into that off white that's on there and around that gray tailbone that's in there and I felt the center sort of one-third and then you fold this over so it's like a shingling effect and then stab that down oh gosh I'm on the wrong freaking side <laughs> that goes like that salvageable a little off center so just gonna pull some of that off and then the next piece overlaps that covers that fold so about a third of it comes down past the fold felt the center one third and then fold that top third over and make sure you lift your piece once in a while because this is a lot of direct stabbing. Probably take about four pieces to get up the tailbone here. Milo left me. Where'd you go? Just had to get something. And then the last fold will be right up at the base of the tailbone under the butt. You getting treats for me or something? Nope. Some chocolate or maybe... I could if you needed me to. Alright. I'm just, just wondering. So now we have the off-white core across the bottom, the off-white top coat across the top, and I'm just going to kind of fan this out to the side just a little bit so that when I put my gray down the center, most of this off-white is off to the side, like make a little part, a little tail part. Now you can either mix these two or you could do an almond layer and then a shiitake layer. Let's do that. Let's just be fancy. So I'm going to use the same technique. Little narrower strip. The almond. So you'll do the whole thing with almond and then... And then I'm going to do a thinner strip of shiitake. Ooh. I know. Different. In the last one I did, I just blended the two together. I just did one more you know, this area. So when I looked up squirrel stuff, mm -hmm. there were five things that they called wisdom from the squirrel. Okay. It said it's a simple creature that we often take for granted. There's things we can learn from watching them. Okay. So the first thing is take advantage of opportunities that present themselves. Yes. Might seem like the squirrel is robbing seeds from your bird feeder, but just taking full advantage <laughs> <laughs> of the opportunity. I mean, technically. I don't get that anyway. I mean, I feel like if you're going to feed the birds, why not feed squirrels? Like, why? Well, the squirrels need food too. Right. Also, to be agile and quick on your feet. Yes, it's yes. It's a little bit of a stretch, kind of like life throws you twists and turns and you got to roll with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're you're taking it to the... Well, not me 
the figurative level. No, the website. Yes. Also, just trust that you the know, branch will be there. Well, the squirrel doesn't <laughs> plan out every second of its day. But you gotta just trust. Go trust the flow. Go with the flow. Right. I really like live in the moment, but save for the future. You gotta always have an eye turned toward the winter. Store your food. All right, I'm feeling for the tailbone in here so that when I put this shiitake on, I know it's, and I've gotten, I feel like I've gotten a little off center, but it'll be all right. I think in general, we look at the critters and see that they're just doing their thing and you know, not stressed out. Amen. I, I have a lot of animals at my house, and I often envy them. Taking my sheep naps, just like, mm, this grass is so good. I don't care that it's got some dirt on it. And then they're just like, rawr, rawr, and they make it sound like your teeth are like, and they make it sound super delicious. I like to fall asleep on my porch listening to the sheep and goats munch on the grass. And then my cats are like, yes, I will sleep on this two inch wide <laughs> precipice <laughs> without a care in the world, with complete confidence and make it look totally comfortable. And the chickens, you know, the chickens are just a hoot. They're happy just walking around eating bugs. Like, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I don't need to cook it or anything. Ooh. Oh, you like? So, this is probably just need a little bit more stabbing. I sort of... Yeah, that's fancy. So now, all it needs is the top coat across the body. So I'm going to mix my almond and shiitake. I'm getting low on almond. And this is just like the Sleepy Mouse. So you getting low on almond is yet, <clears throat> excuse me, another good reason to divide the pack. Yeah, divide the pack. Because I did, uh, you know, on the other ones I didn't do that tail like that where I did a whole layer of just almond. I mixed the shiitake and almond together so it goes a lot farther. So just be aware of what what you have. And then a little bit more behind the head. I think I'll put a little bit this way. And then a little bit this way. Now I can start to really curl it up too. As I stab, I can start to shape what I want him to be doing. Because there's wire in there, it'll stay, but this isn't meant to be like a this isn't really meant to be like a super poseable one, you know, it's just meant to curl up and be cute and happy. So might as well stab it into a position that you really like, you know. I usually end up putting the tail kind of off to one side.
that it? That's all we're learning from squirrels? Uh, um, yes. I do like them. I do really enjoy watching them. They're very busy. Yeah. And, and they're super cute. Unfortunately, on our road, like up at the top of our hill, it's like Death Alley. Uh, I don't know if it's because there's like a good tree on one side and a good tree on the other, or it's like a cousin thing. Uh, I know. It's terrible. Like, there's almost always a dead squirrel on the road there. I need to get the word out. All right, Milo. I think that is a wrap. This was a fun little project. It, it was great. And I love like with these sort of life size things and then with the gnomes, you know, because the gnomes are real life size also, um, being able to pose them together. So, and these are all actually really good starter kits, the little hedgy and the sleepy mouse and now the sleepy squirrel. And we've got the songbird tutorial. Um, this is our uh, baby owl. We have a kit for baby owl, right? E yes. <laughs> and the chipmunk, and there's like two dozen more. So people um, would really be nuts not to try this right, project. Right, 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 right. Uh, enough with the nuts. <laughs> enough with the nuts. I don't like cashews, by the way. Oh, isn't that weird? Well, nobody got our cashews for <laughs> for a gift. So thank you very much, and you can find us on Facebook. Um, our group is Serafina Felting Fanfare, and our Facebook page is Serafina Fiber Art. And our website is serafinafiberart.com, which has all our supplies, all our tutorials, and lots of helpful information is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yes. See ya.